A very simple strategy is, of course, to diversify broadly and then forget about it. Uh, a sum, a but, more but sophisticated. if you're trying to pick winners and losers, you don't necessarily yeah. want to diversify and forget yeah. about it. But I think most people should forget about it. It's too hard. It's too much of a professional's game. But I think it's, you know, amateur investors can sometimes do better. And I think that that means following some very simple prescriptions and not trading in and out all the time. If you trade frequently, if you're watching the news in the past few days and moving in and out every, every couple of days, you're going to lose because you, it's going to go all up in terms of bid-ask spread and uh, commissions. So the better thing is to, I think, to be a longer-term investor and to be a value investor. Let and me ask you, this is, you know, a lot of yeah. investors uh, have been talking about Michael Lewis's book, Flash Boys, uh, and a lot of people in this country feel almost as though the cards are stacked against them when it comes to investing, uh, when you think about 2008 and then the subsequent flash crash after that. And now, you know, you have this book talking about uh, how there's so much inequity in in terms of this electronic tra trading. What's your take on that? Does it affect your average investor? Well, I took a quick look at Michael Lewis' book. I have to say he's a good writer. <laughs> he makes stories seem interesting. But I don't think that it's that big a story because I think that you're going to lose a matter of basis points. If, if you trade infrequently, the millisecond traders don't matter to you. And so the, it's all the, reading his book, it's all the more impetus to think, if you make positions only every now and then, and you're a, a careful value investor, reasonably diversified, you don't need to worry about that stuff. Um, do you see the market splintering into these two groups right now when we look at these momentum plays that have done so well in the last year uh, and in the last several months starting to sell off? Does that signal anything to you, Dr. Schiller? Well, I like to study bubbles and bubbles are all about momentum when you see a stock going up there's a process that happens it attracts people people who uh, get excited that's it's classic it's happened so many times in the last few hundred years the the bubble psychology is a word of mouth effect people see others making money and that amplifies a story so right now it's a, a tech stock store it has been a tech stock story is it a these bubble in some are, of these tech stocks? I mean, would you, would you characterize I, I, it as such? Well, you know, you can never positively identify a bubble. But it, it looks like it, it looks and feels like a bubble, yes. And it, it, it has a story that goes with it, it and it's an excitement that goes with it. Uh, and it's going to turn like it does with other bubbles. Looks and feels like a bubble in tech. Huh. Uh, Robert Schiller, um, how, does it, yeah. how does it end? I mean, is this, uh, for some stocks, a 99 situation all over again or, or not so bad? It, it doesn't look as bad. You know, the market overall is kind of highly priced, but it's not like 1999. According to my CAPE ratio, the cyclically adjusted price earnings ratio, the, the price earnings ratio got up to 46 at the beginning of 2000. And right now it's only about 25, so they were like twice as high. And that was driven a lot by tech stocks in those days, but it was a broader phenomenon. So the stock market is on the high side, and it's being driven by technology recently, but it's not, it's not like it was then. In 99, uh, but I, maybe you know, some still, concern it sounds like you have uh, over some of these, these stocks. Um, anyway, we have to leave it there. Robert Schiller, thank you very much. Uh, appreciate it as always. Yale University professor, co-creator of the Case Schiller Index.